So, um, as you can tell, I finished both sides, and um, what's left, you know, I've cleaned it up, and what's left is the eyes, and that's why I kind of did the zooming in on the place where we're going to work with the eyes, because I know there's lots of people who would say, ah, oh, the eyes is like the toughest thing to, to draw. So, um, let's see where I'm going to go with and um, how it will be. So I just have my guidelines here again. Here's the eyes. I'll basically start off with the eyes. They're quite apart from each other. So here we go. Just a little line over here. And there's another one just like this and the lines are quite actually thick in this picture you now the eye lines and so I'm going like step by step like so And here's like a nice trick to some of the eyelashes. Some of the, uh, so I saw some pictures and then the eyelashes would come like this. Like I normally would draw like one, two, three from up, but this is like another trick that you can do. Note that I just came up with this right now and it's not in the picture. It's just a um, different type of ways that you can draw your manga eyes. Okay, so this comes like, doesn't come like a straight line, it comes a little bit with an angle and then with a side like this. And then you have these beautiful big green anime characters eyes. There's not a lot of places for the whites of the eye. Okay, I hope they did this right. And here's like the eyelashes. They're probably very, very thin in this picture. Here is a little bit of shiny part. And here's another one, like this. Now I'm going to be working with a little bit of eye details uh, or shading techniques for this eye as it's shown in the picture <coughs> because it's a little different from what I normally draw. Alright, so uh, it will be like with the same B pencil and you can see how much we can use one pencil with you know, and we can use it in different, um, how should I say this, different effects of shading. Alright, here we go. First of all, the, the eyes themselves from the side do tend to have like this thick. It's from here, as you can see, the lines are pretty thick. And then you have like the apple of the eye and almost the middle I just do this like this in light way and once I feel I, fa I feel satisfied with how the apples of the eye is I'll start to shade it yeah I'm feeling good this apple of the eye is good so I feel good about how it looks Okay, so let's move ahead to the upper half of the eye. The upper half is as dark as the color of the eye because the apple of the eye isn't exactly black. It's green in this picture. And the, the degree of... Um, the degree of the green, which is kind of the darkest part or the darkest tone or the darkest 
green tone and this picture is the same one or is the same color of the upper half. I hope this is making sense. Basically the tone here is like the tone from up here which is also the tone of the sides of the eye or from here. I hope this is making any sense. And oh yeah, I forgot to do this little part. So it's quite dark actually. And then you have like two lines like this. Then you have, it's surprisingly to be, there's no like a metal green, but just a light tone there. So um, this one's done by colors. I just made it by, by pencil. I probably would use like a 6B here to tone in and probably would give you a better idea on how this character looks like. It's already dark, so I was using a B, and this one is a 6B, so you can already tell that it's quite dark. Okay, it's time for me to ink this eye, and I'll be using, in, in the inking process, because I get frequently asked about this question, Uniball Fine Line Wire and Fade Proof Pigment Ink. And I did try this with watercolors. I applied this because before I do watercolors, here's a tip. This uh, I do this before I do watercolors because if I do this, after applying watercolors, the pencil or uh, the pen will definitely, um, I don't know, this, the, 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 the powdery stuff of, of the watercolors will get into the pen and it will destroy it. So if you want to ink, so how about, you know, if you want to ink after you've uh, watercolored, you know, you can use a pencil in the inking process. So yeah, before watercolors, use this. After watercolors, if you still want to ink, use like a pencil, pencil, black pencil or black prisma color. Something, you know, that doesn't, won't really get ruined. Because this is like a pigment pen and uh, I think the stuff, which is the powdery stuff, will get stuck inside. So I did sacrifice a pen because of this. So uh, this is basically my inking pen and I use four different thicknesses. This is what I use the most. I love the 0.5. Um, because it's not too thick, it's not too thin. And definitely using something like not too thick or not too thin. You won't push your on your hand when you're like using something like an 0.1. You'll press so much on your hand that um, that it might get hurt. And I did, and I know how it feels to press on your hands and your hand will get hurt. It's a real problem. You know, um, the video time is almost out, so I'll do a third part. And I will continue the inking of the eye in the third part.